Let's continue with milling in Creo Parametric. So I started my first operation for this side and created a face milling, volume milling, and profile milling sequence. Really, I would continue on with additional milling sequences on this side, but for the sake of this overview, I'm going to create a second operation where I'm going to start doing the work on the other side of the model. To start off, I'm going to create a new fixture setup reflecting the workpiece being turned upside down. So let's go to fixture and it turns off the display of the original fixture setup. And for this one, I want the part held like this. And let's go to the components tab. Here is the button that we can use to add our fixture component. Let's grab our assembly and roughly position it the way that I want. And right now it's trying to use a component interface because I have an option turned on that remembers the way I assembled a component the first time in my session and then use it for the second time. All right, let's see for that surface. Let's use this one over here. And finally, for the last one, let's pick this surface. That's good. The color changes to orange, indicating that it is fully constrained. I can hit the check mark or middle mouse button to finish assembling. So here I have my second fixture set up. I could change the name if I want, but I'm fine with that. Let me hit the check mark. Now I can create my second operation. Click operation. And for this one, we are going to use a different zero because the zero down at the bottom doesn't make any sense for this one. So let's go to the datum drop down and create a coordinate system. I'll locate it over here and I'm basically doing the same thing that I did for the coordinate system in the previous video. Let's choose this surface to determine Z. The positive Z axis has to point up and for the second reference, I'll pick this flat surface and I want that to drive the X direction and let's flip it. I've got the orientation the way that I want and let's change the name. I'd like to call it the name of the operation. Oops operation 20 dash zero hit the OK button and resume the dashboard and let's with the collector active let's pick our new coordinate system for the zero for the clearance we can use a plane again we don't want the plane down at the bottom of the part so just like before let's create a datum plane while we're in the middle of the operation grab the surface offset a height of zero that is good go to the properties tab and rename this operation 20 retract okay resume the dashboard go to the clearance tab and this one automatically picked up the new datum plane reference so everything else here we've got home point if you want to change that set up some default parameters options here we can choose our material and I happen to have a material already in here and fixture setup let's use the drop down list let's bring this in I don't know why I didn't pick up the fixture but let's just do it again all right let's see for the bottom surface and this surface and this surface that's good hit the check mark and we've got our fixture components in here hit the check mark now we've got our second operation set up all right for this one we're going to do three different sequence or excuse me four sequences facing roughing re-roughing and hole making and for the facing operation let's go to the mill tab and we'll start our facing operation and for this one I will create a mill surface again for what we want to use while I'm in here go to the geometry drop down and here is the option for a mill surface I am going to create a fill surface and for the sketch let's define it Define, oh, hit the define button and then pick the surface that I want to sketch on and hit the sketch button and then I can use the project command I'll use the loop option just to pick the surface in order to grab 
all the surfaces, all the edges from that particular surface. I can see the preview of the mill surface. That's good. Let's hit the check mark and hit the check mark to complete out of the dashboard for the fill surface and hit the check mark to complete the fill surface itself. Let's resume the dashboard and we don't have a tool selected yet. Let's use the same three inch tool that we used before. Yes, I'm going to copy the data that already exists in the tool. And here we can see a preview of the machining that will be done. And like before, I could go and change the parameters. And the parameters are really where you get into the configuration of your milling sequences. But for the sake of this overview, I'm just going to hit the check mark. And let's hide that fill surface for the mill surface. And we can click and hit the play path. And then I'm going to crank this down because I know it's going to go really fast. Hit the play button. And there you see a preview of the machining that would take place in that one. That's good. Let's close out of here. The next sequence is going to be a roughing sequence. And the roughing sequence is used for high speed machining, uh, also used a lot in mold design. And so for this one, let's click on the roughing command. And for the reference for this one, it takes what's called a mill window as the geometry. And so for creating a mill window, go to the drop down over here. You'll notice that all the other ones are grayed out. Let's click on mill window. And for defining it, here we have an option on the dashboard to use the silhouette option. You can see a preview of the area that it would use. And this other one allows you to chain edges, but I'm preferential to sketches, not for any particular reason. And then use the button on the dashboard to define an internal sketch and the surface that I'm going to sketch on. Oh wait, for, just asking for the reference orientation. Let's pick this to serve, excuse me, to face the right side of the screen. Hit the sketch button. And for the references, I'm going to close out of here and it's going to give me a warning that I don't have enough references. I'm going to sketch anyway because I'm going to use the project command with the chain option in order to define my uh, sketch. And pick this one over here, click the next button and it highlights the entire loop. That's good. I will accept that. And points of this chain are coincident. Do you want to convert it into a loop? Yes, I do and click the close button out of here. And there you can see the sketch that is created for the mill window. Let's hit the check mark and hit the check mark to complete the mill window itself. Let's resume the dashboard for the roughing sequence. And for this one, if I go to the drop down list, I don't have the correct tool. So let's edit tools and I'll use the open button and I'm going to start off using the one inch ball end mill and click the open button and click OK to use that new tool. Do I want to copy over the parameters? Yes. And hit the check mark. And let's play this path. So right now it's computing the different regions. And there's a preview of the tool. And again, we can hit the check mark and we can see the rough machining that's going to take place inside of the window. Close out of here. Now I've done my roughing with a big tool. I can then re-rough it using a smaller tool. So we'll go to the re-rough option in here. And from this drop down list, you would select the previous roughing step that was computed. There's only one roughing step, so that's the only one that I'm going to use. Here we have the options tab. Let's go to the drop down list, and I'm going to use a smaller tool. Let's use the open button to grab another tool that I have here. Let's grab the quarter inch ball end mill. Click the open button and click OK to select that. Yes, I'll copy the parameters just to save myself some effort and hit the check mark. And if I want to see what this looks like, we can play the path. All right, 
There we go. And hit the play button. Let's see the additional cleanup that it's doing in this particular case. That is good. Let's close out of this one. And the final sequence that I'm going to do for this overview is going to be for the drilling of these holes. And I'll need to see my window, mill window. Let's turn off its display. And to pick up those holes that I want to machine, I'm going to use what is called a drill group to grab them automatically. And so when you go into the drill group dialog box, you could pick the axes that you want to use, but I happen to know that those holes that I want to drill are all the same diameter. I'm going to go to rule diameters, and my model is in inches. This is roughly 0.4 inches, which turns out to be 10 millimeters. So let us uh, select that and click the OK button. And now that I have my drill group created, here we have our different hole making cycles and I'm going to use just a standard drilling cycle for those holes. Since I had the drill group selected, it automatically selected those. And for this particular tool, I'm not going to use, I could use, eh, well, no. Uh, let's go to here and I'm going to hit the open button just to show you that uh, in addition to these other tools that I have inside of here, uh, you could choose in this case here I have some folder with other different ones in here so maybe I go to my drills and I can grab my 10 millimeter drill and click the OK button and use this tool and always of course you could create a brand new tool on the fly and if you do that here's the name you could choose from the drop down list what kind of uh, tool that you want to use and then fill in different values for the units. You could say, hey, I want this to be in millimeters. And the critical one in this case is that the cutter diameter would be 10 millimeters, so forth and so on. And configure in the different values here. This four doesn't make sense. Let's make that like 100 millimeters. Uh, and then fill in the different values. And this would configure your standard tool on the fly. But like before, I had already selected this one over here and click the OK button. Yes, we'll copy over the parameters. And within here, I could play the path. For some reason, I just have a personal preference to finish off the uh, particular sequence. And then, oh, I didn't want to get into that one. That's another uh, subject for a different story. But again, I typically just click on here and then use the play path. And here we can hit the play button. And there you can see the path that takes around there for those particular ones. And then click the close button. So in that way, we have configured two different operations. We have operation 10, which does one side of the model, and operation 20 three different sequences in the first operation, four in the second one. And once you configure all the different sequences to end up with the final geometry, which in reality would be many more sequences than I have configured here, you can go to the manufacturing tab, and from here is where you can save a cutter location file. And so I could save it for entire, for either a sequence or an operation. In this case here, I can select Operation 10 and good play path if you wanted to. Uh, but we can just use the File option in order to save the CL file. You can also do this MCD file. Acronym escapes me at the moment. Uh, but click the Done button and I'm just going to save it in this particular folder. And right now that name is already used. Eh, let me just call this machining source CNC dash OP10, click the OK button. And that way it's creating that cutter location file. And that tells me that it has been created successfully. And then you would post process it for your particular machine. And right now it's asking me which one I want to post process. Uh, this is the one that I just created. And then you have the different options in here for verbose and trace. Let me click done. 
These are the different post processors I have in my particular folder and I can pick the post processor that I want. It already asked me for a program number. I'm just going to hit the enter key and it generated the process fi the uh, file that would actually drive my machine. So there you have an overview of the milling process in Creo Parametric. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.